Hi, Prof. Again, my name is Konzilin Pandrene. I hope you remember me as a faculty librarian for Economics and Management Sciences. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to welcome you and thank you very much for allowing us to have you to have you as our guest today. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> You are welcome, and please can you share with us the inspiration, the inspiring story of your life? Thank you, Kwanziwe. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, where do you want me to start? Uh, right at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Okay. So first, first, I must just clarify: I wasn't a cleaner. I was a domestic worker. Which okay. I think it's even it's even right at the bottom. The cleaner okay. is a little bit better, uh, but also to just clarify, there's nothing wrong to be you know to be a domestic worker. It's good, honest work. Okay. And that's where I started. Obviously, I started there because I left school. I had to leave school because my parents died. My mother died in grade six now grade eight that's ten at six remember the old days yes. and my father died when i was in ten at ten which will be grade ten okay and after he died there was no one looking after us so i and at that stage i was yeah i was in grade eight just completed grade eight he died in january of the next year so i dropped out of school because of that and so i'm a school dropout also <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I had to find work, and that was the only work, obviously. I was young, mm. I was 16, and so I worked for six months as a domestic worker. So that's how I started working. Okay. And while I was there, uh, those years, remember we're talking about the 70, no, yeah, we're talking about the seven 1970s. Mm. So, um, uh, the the family that I work for uh, realized that I could read and write <laughs> because the, those years not many domestic workers could read and write. Yes, yes. Uh, and then and and they had a small business, so they 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 allowed me or they asked me after cleaning the house and all that they were asked me to also help in a small business filing and do all that stuff cleaning the office and mm -hmm. all that so in that way i became a cleaner yes <laughs> okay okay but yeah so um, i was busy i was i was reading i was busy um you know filing and stuff and there i started to read newspapers and stuff mm -hmm. and i saw that they advertise a job for factory workers we had a big factory i'm coming originally from potchester okay. so we had a big shoe factory and i saw that they advertised for looking for people to work and i applied and then i was accepted so i moved from the six after six months from being a domestic worker into becoming a factory worker at the shoe factory and I worked there for a year, and um, then I saw in again in the newspapers that they are looking for um, administrative clerks at the University of Potchefstroom. Those years, it was not Northwest University, but it was called uh, Potchefstroom University for 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 Christelijke Hoor Onderwijs. Remember, it was all Afrikaans. Well, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And so um, I applied. So after my one year of working as a factory, a factory worker, I then saw that position, I applied, and then I obtained that position. So I worked there for six and a half years as an administrative clerk in the administrative building. Okay. In the meantime, I also got married. Um, I unfortunately didn't want to listen to my aunt and all that. And... Um, you know, I got married very young, but my husband was my ex-husband, very abusive. And so I I had to, to experience that. And then I said to myself, but I can do better. I know, you know, I, I wanted to complete my, my grade 12. He didn't want that, he was fighting and all that and, and all the stuff that people mm -hmm. going through of domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. I was determined and so I studied part-time and I completed my grade 12 through correspondence and then after a huge big fight again 
I decided I'm going to leave and start over somewhere else. But I had to do it at a place where you couldn't find me because I knew you would, you know, try and find me and come after me. Mm-hmm. And so I left Fortschrittsturm and everything in 1985, 13th of December 1985. I resigned from work. Two children at that stage. My boy was a baby. Um, and so I left. I didn't know anyone. I was never in the Western Cape province, but I decided mm-hmm. I'm going, oh, come, come here. Didn't have work, didn't have anything, but I left. I had 300 rent and my two children and a whole lot of faith. I believe that the Lord would help and he helped. Mm-hmm. And so I arrived in Stellenbosch because I saw beautiful pictures of Stellenbosch and that's where I started my new life. Okay. Uh, the Lord helped. I found work at our Dutch Reformed Church office in Belha. So I moved from Stellenbosch to Belha and I started working there in February 1986. And so that's how a life year started. And then I started to apply for other positions and I was accepted as a data capturing clerk at UWC 1 September 1988. Okay. And so that's how I started working as administrative person at UWC. And that's where I learned that one can study for free. It's a benefit if you're an employ- you know, employee. And so, of course, I grabbed that opportunity. So I was working full time, studying part time, raising my two children alone and all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Many challenges, but I was determined and I believe that if, you're, if there's a will, there's a way. And if you believe in the loving God, I do. Yeah. Everything is possible. And so from there, everything just became better. And I could see as I progress and I enjoy studying. I enjoy mm-hmm. empowering myself. Mm-hmm. And after my first degree, I realized I enjoyed this. And so I continued with my second degree. And after my second, after my honors, I said to myself, hang on, I can actually become a lecturer. And so I started tutoring and I can remember the Department of Linguistics. That was one of my majors. Mm. When I asked them, he said, but you're a full-time employee. So I was still working as a faculty officer at that stage. So they said, I can't tutor and they can't pay me. So I said, I don't want the money. I want the experience. So I tutor without getting paid. (laughs) I wanted the experience. And so after my master's, uh, my honors, I started my master's. And then I seriously said to myself, I can become a lecturer. And because of that, I also then did a a higher diploma in education because I wanted to understand about teaching practices and all that. Okay. And after I completed that, I started to apply for lecturing positions. Okay. And and then let me see. Uh, it was 1999 was the year when you did 1998 1999 UWC offer retrenchment packet packages because university was in financial uh, trouble. Okay. I took the package because the age the the postgraduate diploma was only full time. So I took the package. I completed my HDE uh, diploma and then I started to apply for lecturing positions and I obtained my first one in Bloemfontein. Okay. Um, I started the 1st of August 2000 at um, then Technicon, it's now called Central University of Technology. Yes. I was there for a year and then the position that I have now opened up in 2001, mm-hmm. in October. And I applied for that and I was uh, successful and I started, came back to UWC beginning of 2002 as a lecturer in EMS faculty. And that's put the position that I still have. Okay. Okay. Thank you for this exciting story, uh, Prof. I've got another question for you. So what were some challenges that you faced during your academic journey and how did you overcome those challenges? When I started in Bloemfontein, it was actually fun. I really enjoyed what I was doing there. My majors were linguistics, English and is it Cosa for second language speakers. Mm -hmm. And so I was teaching communication courses, which I enjoy. But there I was a junior lecturer. And when I moved over to the EMS faculty, beginning of 2002, I worked alongside my mentor, Dr. Melvin November. He actually Mm -hmm. taught me everything about teaching. 
and okay. everything about you know students and all that and so i worked alongside him i learned from him and 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 i think one of the challenges as women is that we must work extra hard for people to recognize you and it's because of that that i decided okay i noticed that they listen to a person if you have a phd if okay. you're a doctor <laughs> okay it's interesting I started, i started my phd i started my doctoral studies because i realized i need to have that to empower myself Yeah. Um and and so I started to that and I was fortunate to obtain a Saint Pet scholarship. I'm not sure if it's still running. Uh they select the front people starting, you know, starting with their PhDs and it's a year long program and they introduce you to research methodology so that helped a lot because when I was doing my master's degree I did not understand what research methodology was. Hmm. It was a miracle that I completed the masters. <laughs> But after that course I really understand. So I think I I if I look back I didn't really have challenges per se. but i knew that i had to work hard and i was fortunate as i was saying to have dr melvin november to take my hand and to guide me he became my mentor and that is why i'm mentoring you know novice academics now and obviously hard work and the dedication and sacrifices okay quite motivating story prof i'm also motivated myself So one last question and we we are going to wrap up. How do you believe your life journey can positively impact women in today's society? I'm hoping that you especially when women are in abusive relationships. Yeah. I'm hoping that they realize that they 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 shouldn't think it's their fault. Number one, mm-hmm. number two, they is help, they must ask for help. Number three, I think there are many more resources now than those years when i you know started out so they need to say enough is enough they must mm. stop they can start over they must just have the will and a belief in a loving god anything is possible they should ask for help they should take the small steps they shouldn't be worrying about money about the future they should stop and say no and take action because if you take action the lord will take your hand and he will lead you further Thank you so thank, much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for the opportunity and for allowing me to share and I really hope anyone can you know achieve whatever once you achieve your goals and your dreams and give back. I have learned the more you give back the more you receive. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you prof. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye.